Right, this is recording. Okay, gents, thank you for uh, jumping on this afternoon and uh, my first webinar on uh, the Snag app. Um, so just to give you a little introduction to it, I know I've been talking about this for a long time now, it's been a long time in the making, it's probably took a little bit too long to be honest with you, but um, it's forever evolving as anything software related and, you know, when they start building these things, people start asking, can I do this? And you know what it's like. So you, you, as you get, when you do a home automation job, you price the customer to do something and then they start saying, oh, can I do this, this, and this? And that's kind of what it's like with us at WeQuote and Snag now, um, you know, with all our customers and our friends of WeQuote and all our dealers using the platform, they're always wanting to um, make the platform better, which is a good, good thing. And uh, we like to listen as well. So, you know, and I, because no one loves innovation and change more than myself. So the Snag app sort of came about from when I was heavily involved with LCR and running my own business um, and wanting to keep um, keep a track of essentially the 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 changes that the client would was always sort of I called it mission creep, moving the goalposts wherever you want to want to say you know change order or something but if you've got lads working on site and the customer is making them deviate from what the plan is then that is costing you time and money for your business it's it's straight away you need to know about it you know if a client's got an engineer looking at a tv setting up something for the son's computer whatever it is it's costing that your company money so i wanted to try and keep a tally of that and then track that. And that was the, the sort of the first step of Snag, which is just um, graphs, um, managing these little changes whilst people are on site. So I fire from the hip, tracking tracking these changes. So, so I'll just quickly go for this agenda. So introduction of it, the Weco integration, its features, and really most importantly, is the future roadmap of, of the application. So, Snag at the moment only works with WeQuote. It does work standalone. So if you just if you don't have a WeQuote account, you can just use Snag by itself for tracking your hours. If you don't have a WeQuote account, it works best with WeQuote, and um, it's automatically um, tracking all these hours and then pushing all the data across to WeQuote, and which I'll do a bit of a more of a deeper dive on that in, in a minute. So I'm just going to quickly go through this. This presentation and uh, snagging your issues. So, any issues on site, you can take a, um, a photograph of it. Future roadmap will be videos and things like that. Uh, I'm obviously selecting pictures from the existing gallery and making a material. It's currently a material. This is just literally a list. It's not linking to any of the supplier catalogs or your inventory. That's going to be coming further down the line. And then on the we quote side of things, this is the um, where all the issues or any uh, the snags that you've done will pull through to we quote. I'm just trying to get through this slide very quickly because uh, you know this is boring. I want to show you the actual platform itself. Workday journeys for the engineer. Um, so this is new. We just launched this. Uh, I think it was just in between Christmas and New Year. Um, so now the engineers can then start travel. They can clock in, travel to the job. They can take their breaks. They can start another job. They can clock out for the day or clock back into, you know, and that. What we're trying to do is see an engineer's journey. So if he's got five jobs to go to in one day, you want to be able to see like a nice kind of like train line app style of, you know, there's his journey where they've been. And it's also pulling through the the, um, the GPS coordinates every time that they clock in or basically any activity. So they take a break, travel, clock into another job, the GPS look coordinations is pulling through and sending that get pushed up to the week quote. Now this is what we call the uh, timesheet dashboard. Uh, so, we'll, and this is the overview. Um, that's basically the information that's being generated by the Snag app is being pushed up to the week platform. And this is new, which we launched everything between Christian New as well, working in offline mode. Um, um basically, you know, if you are in a location with no phone signal, then clocking in and out needs to work without no signal. And also 
if you're taking pictures of snags and issues, they also need to be able to work offline. So what happens is we stack and queue all the information now. So if there's no phone signal on the job, then it will automatically go into offline mode, or you can literally manually go to more, go into settings, enable off offline mode, and then do all your photographing. And then obviously when you go back into um, switch off offline mode off, it will then send all the pictures up to the Wicro Cloud. And I'll, do, I'll come to the timeline at the end. So let's just jump straight in. Okay. So <laughs> anyone who's actually sort of first time come on to uh, Wicro, they're not actually a current user of Wicro, I do suggest that you go on to the website and book in a sort of meeting with myself as well, because we're kind of not discussing building a quote in this demo. Um, we are discussing everything after that point once it's been accepted. So everyone who's familiar with the projects that is, they've already seen invoicing, purchase orders, pick lists. But now what you've got is timesheets and snags now. Okay. I've got two accepted quotes, Casamora, if you're with if, if you love Island fans. So here's a K1 last night. We've got a project there called Casamora and we've got a lighting control system and we've also got a complete smart home system in there. So we've got two accepted quotes that the client has agreed. Uh, I'm not going to start doing any invoicing on this on this uh, presentation, but what we are going to do is, is we're going to jump over to these time sheets over here. Version one. Uh, let's just come on one second. Um, version one of the, of, of the system is we are essentially just tracking the hours against the quoted systems. So we don't have um, tasks as of yet. We will be starting that straight as soon as we get back from um, that will be our next, uh, our next software that we'll be building, task management subtasks. But right now, currently, we're doing this the week our way, which is just keeping it as simple as we can. So in its simplest format, when I was running my business, um, I just wanted my lads on site just to clock into basically what I had priced. So if I had priced 10,000 to the video distribution system, I wanted them to clock in against time that I had allocated to try and work out if I'd made a profit. Um, I'm not so much doing it against the task That'll be the version two of it, which will be starting in a few weeks' time. Um, and you'll see we've tabbed, we've tabbed this information. So you've got systems, your labor types. Um, and this is pulling through all those accepted quotes. So those quotes here, if you look at here, we've got uh, the Lutron Lighting quote is just one system. And if I go to this complete smart home system, you'll see we've got three systems, control four, video distribution and we've got some audio distribution as well. So from a timesheet point of view, we are just pulling them all into one view together and then saying, well, okay, this is what these systems, so it could be, in, we could have the same system in multiple quotes. You could have multiple labor types inside the same system as well, is what it's showing on here. And these are the time entries that have been coming through from the Snag app. So you can see, each individual and so then this graph just cascades then just gets it just gets bigger and bigger and then it will then block off into the months once it goes past that month and then you can drill down to the months as well and then what does it we're saying we've quote we quoted across the two accepted quotes the total hours of that is uh 288 hours uh, you can actually change this now by the way if you go into your company settings scroll down the right hand side you can there's a little feature i've just changed uh, where you can actually change any hours and it displays it in days instead of hours so just to let you know about that as well i'm just going to keep it in for hours for this for this presentation um and then we're working out what's been booked so total hours worked Total booked hours, any overtime hours, and any billable hours. So overtime hours are anything outside their eight-hour day. 
and then anything outside the quoted hours. So if I'm looking at this video distribution here, I'm saying we've quoted 56 hours, we've booked 17 hours already. If they go over the eight hour day or they go over the quoted hours, then that tallies up here in the overtime hours. And then it's also saying this is the cost, this is what we cost price to the business from the quote, and this is the sell price, and this is what we booked the cost price, and this is the sell cost price as well. So we're trying to work out if we've actually made any money or not. Or you know, if you're doing large projects and you might have two, you know, five, six projects on in one go, and we all know what it's like managing a, a, an installation team, a service team, it's very difficult to try and keep a tally of all of these costs. And the clocking in and marrying up the t marrying up the clocking in timesheets to what you've actually priced against the job. And then on the second tab is labor types. So if you're already using WeCall, you'll know what this is. We price all the labor on the labor types. So we have labor groups and labor types. And then this is collating then all of the first six labor type across the two quotes. Okay. Then we've got the timesheets themselves. So these are all the individual timestamps clocked into one place. Um, someone to just be aware of, this is at project level. Um, we will be having, which is all part of the tasks and the scheduling, it's all under the user. So there'll be a separate section where you can drill down on the user across all projects. This is about drilling down to the cost level of the project. So we're, there's, so there'll be a separate view for viewing um, and scrutinizing engineers' time or any discrepancies. So that'll be a separate view. That'll be on the user. All of these time entries as well can be, you can manually add them in. And you can edit their timesheets as well. So if they have gone over and left it clocked in all weekend or whatever it is, you can even very easily just go in and adjust their time, even if they booked it to the wrong system or the wrong labor type. So you can change that too. Then the users then. So you can say, well, how many times they've been to site? Uh, you can book the travel hours, total hours, what's been booked and their overtime hours. And then, um, yeah, so it's important on there, the, the over hours and anything billable. We've kept it with the WeCode colors, so it feels familiar right through the platform with the green, purple, and the blue. So let me just jump onto the app. So, Snag Home screen, the Snag Time screen, and the Snag Project screen. So they are sort of the main menus across the Snag app. And then there's also the More button where you've got your settings and obviously your customers. There's the offline mode there. Also, I'm not going to press it now, but uh, if you do need to work offline with the app, you can just swipe that little button there. So on the home screen, you can actually create a project. You can add your snags and then you can do your standard sort of what we call the engineer's day. Um, you can create a project. Obviously, Phil, I'm not going to create a new project now, but you know, basic information, select the currency this, this job relates to any customer, add new customer, and create a signing to that to that project. Then you've got add snags. So we can say take a photograph. There we go. Have a look out here. And let's say maybe that socket is in the wrong place or something. Maybe it needs moving up, something like that. Save, save, and just say. You can put time to this, you can put hours to it as well. So you don't have to put a cost to it, you can leave that blank. You can deal with that afterwards. I'll just put something in there anyway and just say it's an hour. Good to be moved. And then select this job. And then you may need to sign this off by the engineer or the customer. Three days. Save that and then save. So there we go. So in my project now, you can see I've got this issue. These snags will pull straight back into Rico pretty much in instantly. So the API is uh, it's not poll, it's instantaneous. Uh, if you do have an internet connection, all these issues and snags will pull through straight away. So they will sit in the snag list until you deal with them.
So then you can load them into a quote. It could be then a change order, and then you can push that through to uh, an invoice as well. And then you can sign them off if they've been um, quoted or not. That's why we've got this tab here. So you see. Also underneath the project, you do have timesheet. So you can just look at as an engineer level, this is not globally. So you always got to think right now, snag is at the engineer level. So you're not going to be able to see all of the the the, the snag users timesheets from the snag app. You're going to do that from we quote. And then this is broke down into essentially every single one of their time entries. So you can see that Tuesday, the 9th of January, they're working on multiple different systems, but clocked in at different times. And they can also add manually as well time entries. So very easy, you know, select the start time, where well, it automatically goes to today's date, select the end time, and then they can select the system, whether they're working on. I'll come to that again in a bit. So let's move on, go back to the home screen. <clears throat> So if I want to clock in, so standard engineer's day, clock in, what are we going to do? We're going to put a start travel. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And actually, this possibly may be billable. So I'm going to select the project. I'm going to put billable, put the postcode in. One YP. I'll select that. Just put mark driving. So it's just a note. Start the travel. So you'll get this little spinner timing now because what this is actually doing is going away in the background getting the gps coordinate locations and then it's going to depending on where the signal is okay we've started traveling to the job now um so that will just leave that running and we drop that down we can actually just drop that open and we can actually put in the coordinates to start traveling as well so the engineer's got to site manage finish travel start the job okay what are we actually working on so let's clock into what we're going to be doing so let's just say we're doing the lutron lutron installation commissioning we choose our service our professional services and let's just say i'm doing the panel building on site so what am i working on the lutron modules okay this is not billable i'm going to clock in and then it'll get again, it's got that little spinny um, timer there because it's getting the GPS coordinates location. Okay. It's clocked me into and timing against that system of, you know, so that quote, that system, and that labor type. Because if, if you've priced two days to, do, to build the Lutron panels or install them on site, then it needs to be done within the time that you've allocated. And um, version one of Snag is the simplest format is for engineers to just clock into that particular system and labor type that you've priced. Okay, yeah. So the, ge the geolocation. Oh, okay. So people want to know what geolocation. So currently, the geolocation is only pulling back the GPS coordinates into to we quote. Okay. On the next version of the Snag app, it's going to show it all basically it'll track the journey okay so we've got to do things incrementally rome wasn't built in a day <laughs> so we've got to so the first step was um getting the gps coordinates of when they click clock in when they click take a break so if i say manage now take a break now they don't have to take breaks you know it depends on your company policy if you want the lads to clock out for their breaks, they can do. And um, but what I've put it in because people asked for it. So take a break, and they're on the break now. So you'll, if you look, what it's doing is that engineer's workday start to build up. So you travelled <coughs> to the project, you started on the Lutron system. He's now on a break. Now you can actually see this on 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 the week road side as well. So they're just on the actual clock in here. I can see who's actually working right now. So we can see that Lee's on, he's actually on that job. So you have a list here of all your engineers. Now this is just a little mini dashboard widget 
that will be all part of which will be under um, which is going to be all part of our new um, operations hub essentially um, which we will be building so you've got sales inventory there's going to be a whole new section which is our operations hub and this is all to do with staff and the sort of real-time information of what's going on within the business so i'm going to come off my break so i can finish break continue that's what we want to do and that will just clock me back into what i was previously on if you want to just change that not a problem just manage again so then they can start another job or you could actually just travel um, to another project as well so you know it's that full engineer's work day so i'm going to do clock out and in fact let's just do start another job keep on the same project and let's say i'm going to go onto control four now c4 commission professional servicing and let's just say i'm a second fixing save what you're doing let's get rid of this we're now installing the c4 Please. I'm going to clock in. So same again. Just the GPS coordinates, and we've, we've deliberately kept it so every time they have have adding one of these stamps, it does get GPS because we don't we don't want to sort of people saying they're clocking in and editing things from home. We want to know when they're clocking into to to which particular task and where. Um. So now if I clock out for the day. And clock out. Are you sure? Yes, I do want to clock out. Track. So it's displaying my work day there. So I kept this on deliberately. I didn't want to hide it away. So if an engineer comes to his, yeah, okay. So if we get um, if an engineer starts his next day, at least he can just still stay on the home screen where he's been what he did that just then also shows on time so we just jump over to time because i'm actually running out of time as well <laughs> so this screen which is the time screen you can just swipe here so an engineer is going to look at it. it's a bit european style the way i've done this i've wanted to do it by weeks so they can look at their their working weeks and then they can see the hours they've worked so as an owner of a business and dealing with staff and engineers, it's always a difficult conversation to have with people if they work over their over 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 time or the week before they might have left early. But everyone always remembers when they've done overtime, and everyone always forgets um, when they've had an early dart. So I think capacity and being fair and just avoiding difficult conversations when it comes to hours plus and minus hours then this is giving them a nice clear view say okay well last week you went over uh, this week you've had four hours uh, you know of an early dart on a friday and it's just totaling up the hours where they've worked on the project and uh, any billable hours as well then we go to the tracker that is basically the entire time stamp history across all of the projects and just basically collating all the timestamps together. Um, you can switch off the ability for them to edit them. So if you don't want them to edit their their, uh, their timesheets, you can switch that off as well. That's just under the user permissions. Um, the same thing for um, seeing cost and seeing number of quotes, that's all hideable as well. So what I mean by that is on the projects, any number of snags, number of quotes, the total cost of the project, that can all be hidden as well. So engineers don't see that, but you could have that available for project managers. Yeah, so I think let's jump on to the Q and A's. Oh yeah, let's do roadmap. Quickly go to roadmap. So just before I jump onto the roadmap there. <coughs> Uh, we've got the poll ready for this the poll deck so yeah. let them do a poll massive you got to do a vote now i'm going to vote lee out <laughs> um so like i was saying before as soon as you get back from barcelona 
tasks and scheduling, floating the engineer's time. It's a biggie and we're just going to be starting it straight away. Rizwan's already been brainstorming all this out and building the database for it. Uh, we're kind of just waiting on me and you now, aren't we, just to finish off all the UI stuff. And uh, we can get started on that straight away. So February will be tasks and scheduling. And then these are the sort of four main features that can be rearranged, uh, which I'm going to do a little put a poll out if you want to use the Everyone's poll. Sorry. Everyone's already voting, <laughs> yeah. So what's the scheduling task number one? Let's see which one. Did I get it right? Yeah. Material list, yeah. Adding line items. Yeah, okay, so I got that one wrong. So people, so yeah, everyone's voting for creating invoices and line items on the quote. And the most is scheduled. Yeah, scheduling, which we're going to do anyway. Um, the reason why I've got view quotes and POs in front of create invoices and line items is we need to be able to view all the existing quotes and view all of the existing POs before we can create it. Um, so that's why I've put that, that's why I did this roadmap, I did that in that in that in that order, but we'll probably end up if everyone's saying they want create invoices, create line, simple line item quotes, we'll just have to just do it at the exact same time. And then the next one, the last one, uh, people are thinking, well, why asset management tagging? So something that I wish I would have always had at LCR was some kind of um, asset management system for, you know, if you've done a large project and you've sold two hundred thousand pounds worth of materials or well, that's a lot of kit you've got to deal with over the next five years when it comes to serial numbers warranties anything that goes faulty returning them back to suppliers so i see snag um, handling all of those problems those issues because essentially we don't get paid to deal with those things and they just consume our time and um, something that used to always happen to me a lot was um if a part went faulty um the customer wouldn't pay me for a, a job that had absolutely nothing to do with something so if i might have done a cctv job and a touch panel was broken for a line or something or whatever it was something might have broken then i'm not getting paid for the fully installed and working cctv system because something isn't working from a system i fitted two years ago However, and that used to happen quite frequently where customers would try and put you over a, a price barrel and you know control you to try and get back and sort things out and um yeah this asset management and tracking and uh managing the warranties and returns i think um is definitely the future of uh for the snag app but yeah material lists that will be live linked so what will happen is if engineers are on site, they can just use your own inventory. Uh, we are updating the stock module as well. That's currently in progress at the moment being updated. And also uh, we are updating the purchase orders at the moment. We're trying to get this all ready for ISE, which is at the moment with everything else that we're doing. But yeah, if an engineer is on site and then he's used a load of bits out of the van, or they've had to order stuff or whatever it is, they can just globally search, hopefully across all catalogs, T's and C's, and thing. And um, it's not like a price, they search for price, it's just looking for those parts and adding them to the list. And then obviously you can deal with them as a snag, then what, as an admin on, on the Wicro platform. Um, yeah, was anyone else question on that? Yeah, so when you clock in, can it do geo stamping? Yes. So yeah, it's doing geo stamping. Yeah, yeah. yeah the base of the GPS. Nicola asked, "What constitutes billable hours versus what are just normal hours?" Oh, okay. So normal hours is everything that has been quoted. Let's go back to here. Projects. Let's go to timesheets. So, if you've quoted um, the hours for the job. Those so um, quoted hours go under the total hours booked and anything on the overtime hours as well. 
so that the old work class is over hours. So then that's anything that you've allowed in the quoted time. When you click billable, that might be uh, something that's completely outside that agreed quotation, outside that scope, and it will track it completely separate. So it doesn't sometimes it doesn't even need to be related to a quote or a system or anything. The engineer can just go right straight away. This is separate to the quote. It's billable. You might tell them right clock off, clock into billable, just clock into billable on that project. And then we know then at the end of the month, we can get all, all those timesheets, filter everything by what was billable and what wasn't billable. Um, and then we can then add those to a separate um, quote or maybe add them to the, the, the change order. If the engineer is clicking billable, it is billable. It's not really a change order. It could be, now, for, for me, when I was on site, it was always something like the customer's changed his mind instantly. I've got plasterers and other trades following behind me. And I'm going to do these changes instantly because I can't, haven't got time to do a quote or a price or even do a snag. It's just like I want to stop what I'm doing. I just need to clock in. This is outside the scope straight away. So I hope that sort of clears that up. So is that clear? So that will travel expenses capture and onward billing? yes that's in the roadmap so that will be under the snag so you see why this is sort of blank at the bottom down here so underneath making material lists we're going to start adding um fuel receipts any type of just photographing the receipts or um tracking expenses that's all going to be under snags because at the end of the day if it's a it doesn't really no matter what it is if it's a cost time an issue making a list it's just a little snag list that you just need to deal with as a business straight away so we're going to have all these little quick action buttons that will be specific and also if you need something custom building for your business that's just unique that you might want doing look at we quote you know we've got very good developers and we can actually we could develop something for you i'm actually already developing this app outside a we quote for another large company where they want to they want to use it so they like what they see and they want to extend it and just laser focus it uh, for their business next question please natalie well alex has asked can you export the entire project timesheet as a pdf for evidence to a client for time on a project currently not but I could probably add that in. So I will add that to the dev list and make sure we add a little export to PDF button on here. Um, probably it would be good to really do it as a report, I think. Um, I'll see if we can get like a port built and a little report button on there ready for ISC. So yeah, I'll take a note of that one. Is there permission levels so engineers can't create new projects, for example? Uh, yes, I think that's already on. I need to double check. It might be part of the next update, but that is, I know that's done because I've seen it on the staging app. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, one last thing, actually, which I've kind of just missed off is if we um, go back to that invoicing, let's oh, just say. Sorry, but one more question. Is it possible to upload video footage? No. So, video footage currently is not available. Um, it is definitely, definitely, definitely in the roadmap. To add videos to snag that's definitely for sure let's do new change order on this so um kind of missed this out but it's important um i've just put this quote into change order mode um so this is the scenario that's going to happen so i can add these snags to my quote. So here we say there's that one we did with the socket. I might be able to add accessories to it or whatever it is. I don't know, put that on there for now, just as a for, for just for this demo purposes. And I might just want to put some labor time to it. Engineer on side, let's just say it's three hours. Add that in. So that's that's gone in straight away. Apply that. Um there. So that's on the view those changes. So this is when you would then send this change order off over to the client with those snags and uh, get their approval. Yeah, that's how we're adding, that's how we currently add the snags to 
the project. And obviously, once there's no snags left, you're not going to be able to add the snag button. Any other questions, Nat? No, that's okay. No? Okay. So, I'll just jump back to my PDF. We've done the questions. It is available to download now on uh, Android and Apple. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, webinar. Um,